Okay, we've now studied demand and supply and energy. Let's put them both together onto one diagram. Okay, demand curve down sloping, supply curve upward sloping. I'm going to tell you now that where they cross is the market equilibrium. What is a market, first of all? A market okay, is any place, doesn't have to be a physical place, just any place where buyers meet sellers to exchange goods and services. So a physical market stall is fine, that's an example of a market. Okay, eBay is a good example of an online market. There are many, many markets. Any kind of random transaction that's taking place between a buyer and a seller, there's a market okay, at, that, uh, at that specific place. All right? But not just any place where buyers and sellers, they need to be willing to exchange goods and services. Cool. All right, so to understand why P1 and Q1 is the equilibrium price, is the market clearing price, we need to kind of go against this. All right, so I'm telling you now, where demand equals supply, that's a definition of equilibrium, also known as market clearing price, where demand equals supply. Well, to understand why, let's go against that. And let's go, pick two points above and below, okay, the current price level, the equilibrium price level, to understand why that can't be equilibrium. All right, so let's start by going above P1. And let's call that P2. Okay, so let's say the price is at P2. Let's touch the demand curve, read off. That's the quantity demanded. Okay, quantity demanded at price P2. And let's read off from the supply curve the quantity supplied. Let's call that QS. All right, so you can see here demand is not equaling supply. There's a quantity supplied at price P2, there's quantity demanded. There's a big discrepancy. Okay, there's a massive increase, there's a massive um, surplus of supply as opposed to demand. Okay? We call it an excess supply. Supply is greater than demand. How do we represent that? Well, we can shade in this entire triangle here. And that triangle represents at the current price level all the points, okay, the total area where supply is greater than demand up until when demand equals supply. Okay, so all the points in the shaded area, supply is greater than demand. That's what the area represents. Okay, I can label that excess supply. So that entire shaded area represents an excess supply. Supply is greater than demand. Now that can't be equilibrium because, think about it, suppliers are not stupid. So they're supplying QS of a specific good, whereas only QD is being demanded. Okay, only QD is being sold. So what's happening? Well, if they look in their suppliers, look in their warehouses, they'll see huge surplus stocks or whatever good they're actually trying to supply or trying to sell. And they'll realize, hang on a minute, we're producing this much, okay, a huge amount, but we're only selling so much. But the problem there is that, oh my God, our warehouses are full of stock. This isn't good. Okay, that stock is valuable. It's sitting there doing nothing. So suppliers, what they do is, what well, we need to actually reduce our, we need to reduce our stock levels. We need to get rid of the stock and sell it somehow. How can we do that as suppliers? Well, we can reduce our prices. So let's do that. Let's reduce our price to P1. Mm -hmm. But I'm only willing to do that as a supplier, as a producer, if I can increase my profits. Well, certainly, profits will increase. Well, how do we know that? Because more will actually be sold. From QD to Q1 is now going to be sold. Okay? Whereas at QS, there was a huge discrepancy between what's being sold and what's actually being produced. Okay, so now less is being produced, so it's going to cost them less to produce Q1. Okay, they're going to sell more. So we know that there is a profit motive in doing so. Alright, so they sell more, there are less stocks now left in the warehouse, suppliers are happy. Now, by reducing their price to P1, what's going on? Okay, well we know price changes will mean we move along curves. So supply is contracting, less is being supplied from QS to Q1. Alright, and more is being demanded. The price has fallen. So we extend demand from uh, QD to Q1. And that takes us to the equilibrium price. Well, there's no excess supply. All right? As long as there's excess supply, there's always an incentive for suppliers to reduce their price. So it can't, equilibrium can't be above P1 because otherwise there will always be excess supply. And that can't be maintained. Let's go below. Let's take P3 and understand why that can't be equilibrium. Okay, so P3... QD, follow the green writing now. QD is demanded and QS is supply, just reading off the supply and the demand curve. What's the form we've got here? Well, there's the quantity demanded, that's what people are willing and able to, to pay. Okay? They're demanding that much of the good or service. 
whereas only QS is being supplied. All right, in which case, demand is greater than supply. We've got an excess demand, and that can be represented by this entire shaded area. Okay, that is the excess demand. That entire area represents all the points at current price P3, which I've got to label, current price P3, where uh, demand is greater than supply up until the equilibrium point. So all of these points here, demand is greater than supply. So represent excess demand at price P3. Well, again, this can't be maintained. Okay? Again, suppliers are not stupid. They're supplying a good which is in massive demand. Okay? Demand more than what's currently being sold and supplied. So what are suppliers going to do? They know that they can supply more. Look, the supply good goes all the way up. They can supply more of the good and service, but they need a high price to incentivize doing so. That's the motive. Increase your price, increase your profits. You can sell more at a high price, increase profits. So that's what they do. They increase their prices. And by increasing their prices, okay, the price will move up to P1, which then means, again, we're going to move along curves. Okay, by increasing the price, supply will extend. So supplies will produce more, increase supply. Demand will contract. So we're kind of rationing this, ex ex this excess demand by increasing the price. Demand will contract up to P1. Okay, and that will, again, ration the excess demand. It makes no sense to charge at a price where there's excess demand because you can increase your profits by reducing the excess demand, by rationing the demand and increasing prices. So we know excess supply can't be maintained. It doesn't make any sense for producers to price at a point where there's excess supply. And it doesn't make any sense for producers to supply at a point where there's excess demand. Because at both excess supply and excess demand, profits can be made by either reducing the price and rationing out the excess supply, or increasing the price and rationing the excess demand. Therefore, the only place, and the only logical place where equilibrium price and quantity can occur is when demand equals supply, the market equilibrium price. Hope that makes sense. We're now going to talk about shifting curves and seeing when new equilibrium points occur when we shift curves. Thank you. See you next time.